Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Shenanigans NYC edition. I have great company in the studio today. First up, we have one half of the Giggly Squad. (laughs) She's one of Variety's 10 comedians to watch and recently announced her very first Netflix special. The very funny and equally beautiful Hannah Burner in the oh house. God. Thank you, Sheena. It's always an honor and a privilege to be on your pod. Aww. You walked so I can run. <laughs> and anytime you text me, I'm like, I get to hang out with Sheena. I love to see you when I'm in New York. It's like, these are such quick trips, so I, I need to see my people. You might as well make content. You know, exactly. Because you're one of my favorite people to make content with. Mm-hmm. When I saw the Netflix thing, which we'll get into in a bit, I was just like, yes. As you should. This should have already happened. And Stop, I'm so, you're going to make me cry two minutes so in. So proud of you. <laughs> Paige is in Charleston, but I'm sure we'll pool. get into some shenanigans with her soon. Yeah. yeah. Looks fun. Also joining us in the shenanigans studio today for the very first time, but hopefully not the last, we have a reality TV connoisseur, one of my favorite, personal favorite, Bravo historians, the host of Gabbing with Gib, podcast entertainment journalist, Gibson Johns. How we doing? I'm so happy to be here. First time. You walked so I could run. (laughs) (laughs) I do have to say, I didn't know you were coming. And then she was like, by the way, Gibson's coming. I go... Gibson and I go way back. Yeah. Like when I first got on Bravo, he was such a friendly face. And like, I just always love this man. Yeah. So we get to hang. I remember our first time doing a little interview around a little table AOL. in my office. Yeah. You were like, we, we hit it off. You, we hit it off. I was trying to make him laugh. You, yeah. uh, you put me in contact with the producer of the show. Back then. <laughs> Didn't work out for me. Oh, was I trying to get you on the show? You were. Because he's hot. Yes. I know. Yeah. And look, every time I eyes. see you, it's usually you asking the questions. So mm-hmm. I thought it would be fun to, you know, Wait, flip I the script a little. I love, I love that. Fuck with him. Yeah. I've done that <laughs> recently a little bit. Be like, bit. so how's your I'm relationship with your parents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to switch things up on shenanigans. Oh, Keep yeah. it fresh. You know, do some hot topics, do some solos, and just do some different things that I've never done. Because I've been doing this show for like six years now. Literally. And I'm just trying to switch it up. So I thought you two would be a cute little combat. I, I do have to this. say, yes. I do have to say about you, you are fearless. And I think like that's a lot. That's like ninety oh, percent of the battle. Mm-hmm. And like everything's changing so much. Like when you did when you started reality TV, the system was different. Like Oh my God. Yeah. How people consumed it, everything. So like just kudos to you for like evolving and Thank you. You were doing YouTube vlogs like Ahead of your time. Ahead of your time. No, truly. Thank you. you you made you were making the most of this platform before a lot of people were doing that. And now it's now everyone's I think is playing catch up with the things that you've been doing. Yeah. And to some success and some not, but like you've maintained it. And it's no, been- I can literally talk for an hour about Sheena. <laughs> I do, I do. That's why I brought them here today. <laughs> Fuck the notes. Also, like <laughs> you've been doing reality TV so long and you've had so many ups and downs and battles. Tell and you just always it. keep your head up. And um and then like when when I've been going through ups and downs, you were the same to me. Mm. So I just like really appreciate you and respect you a lot. Well, thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to get into some shenanigans today. She goes, now let's talk some shit. <laughs> let's let's how about let's just start with what did y'all get up to over the weekend? Did you see the eclipse? Where were you at? <laughs> Where did everyone get these sunglasses? Literally, no one gave me the memo. This guy on the street, literally, just selling them to the library. There was a two-hour line at the only store left in Manhattan that had them. They were sold out everywhere. The libraries, like, no one had them. My friend found them. Nobody told me about it from a guy on the street. I didn't get the accessory, (laughs) so I was just walking out with my head down. And you know when you're like not supposed to do something, so you're like, I kind of want to look. Uh huh. But I just like kept my head down and went home, and I felt a little left out. I was I was on a road trip by myself driving back from somewhere, so I didn't even. I oh, noticed, you were going through something. I, know, I was, <laughs> and I noticed that it was getting a little dark, and I was like, I like totally forgot it was Wait happening. A <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> oh, so no, I literally, I think it's the end of the world all the time. So I'm like, this is it. Yeah. What was it like in LA? Well, I was here. Oh, you were here. So I was on a rooftop here with oh. some friends, and all of a sudden, it was like, wait, where'd our heater go? Literally. <laughs> it got so cold, I felt like it dropped 20 degrees. One thing about Sheena is she will have a friend group around her at all times. Sheena is fun. You see Sheena, she knows what's going on, and I knew you were going to do something for the eclipse. I, I knew to. it. You had to. <laughs> she will use any excuse to have a good time. <laughs> when she jokes, me and Paige, we'll do any excuse to cancel plans. Right. So then we're just always fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
It's a it's good meet energy. I don't know what the middle is, but you can meet in the middle. <laughs> Rob wanted to plan a trip to Texas because that was supposed to be one of the best places to see it. And then we got booked on Watch What Happens Live. And I'm like, well, now we're going to have to make sure to, go to get Texas. to New York Listen. in time to see the Look, she there. lives life to the fullest. I have to say that. I kind of would have loved if you were chosen Texas and just <laughs> over Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> right? Sorry, Andy. Yeah. I'm busy chasing mm-hmm. the eclipse. <laughs> Brock got me a telescope for Christmas. <laughs> and so he was like, well, you know, honey, we can also travel with it. I'm like, first of all, it's in Palm Springs. We're not driving to Palm Springs to pack the telescope, to fly with it and go to Texas. That <laughs> also, that's amazing. how you theory. burn your eyes out. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Brock, use the telescope with the clips. Yeah, See what probably. happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to start with a little game and then we'll get into some <laughs> hot topics. But wait, before we do, were you here for the earthquake? Yes. Was that gnarly? I, I was in What Florida. was that like? Okay. I thought that my building was gonna collapse. I live in a walk up. Yeah. And, and I, I have like all, I, all, all of a sudden it just started shaking and I was like, Oh, this is an old building. I guess I'm just like gonna go down. You know, like this is it. Right. Like this my is it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it happens. yeah, that's gonna happen. It's all happening right now. It's all happening. It's all happening. <laughs> and then I looked outside and there's people just walking like nothing had just happened. So I was like, no, uh, I don't know what New that York was. Shit it's ever. so bizarre. <laughs> and then I yeah, and then you and then the, the group text start blowing up. And it was like, but mm-hmm. some people didn't feel it, which I it, it was very intense <laughs> where I was. You're like, I'm just an empath, so I felt it really hard. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was I was in Miami for shows and I called Des and he didn't answer. He called me back. I answered. Like we had this weird like phone exchange. And then he called me. He's like, you're never going to fucking believe what just happens. And I'm like, what? And he goes, I thought I was going to fucking die. There was an earthquake. Because we're, we're like the 13th floor or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so... But everyone kept making jokes like, oh, my coffee like moved a little and like, please yeah. respect my privacy at this time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> People being dramatic as fuck. Well, I had a near-death experience, so I'm just kidding. You did. I mean, no, it's scary. It is it scary. Is scary. But... Have you seen the like viral jokes and memes about me going around where everyone's like, oh my God, have we checked on Sheena? Is Sheena okay? I decided to respond to one and I was like, thanks. I'm good. I actually don't get to New York till Sunday, but thanks for checking in. It was a perfect response. I saw it. <laughs> it was very good. I'm just like, fuck you. Guys. Yeah. Okay. No, you, you like I can be, be in on the just, joke too. Exactly. Okay. That's the only way at this point. To Sheena, just, like, go for during it. season, how do you navigate <laughs> your know. own phone? Um. So I try to stay out of the comment section mm-hmm. as much as possible. Mm-hmm. If someone sends me something funny, then I may look at what was either before or after that yeah. and respond to a couple things. But yeah. I genuinely am just trying to stay off it because it's not been the most positive and supportive. Well, also, the, Shocking. the algorithm, it's like sh- continually showing you your ex. It'll yeah. show videos of people talking about right. you. Oh, and yeah. you're like, no, this is exactly what I don't want. I'm like, not, I'm not interested. Not yeah. interested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, have to navigate literally that. Tell it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah my God. But at some point, you must have just feel, at least for on Sunday, it's like, I got to jump in. Oh, totally. I so <laughs> I like to be in on the joke. I'm yeah. like, I'm also writing a couple new songs right now. <gasps> And one of them, if I said what it was called, it's so obvious, but I'm just like, you know what? I can take what you've said, turn it into a bop, and then, yep. you know, flip the script in yeah. the lemons last out of, Lemonade verse. out of lemons. We love yeah. it. We love so, it. Okay. I thought it would be fun to play a game called faux pas or fair game. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to name off a topic and I want you both to weigh in on your thoughts on the matter. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette as you walk down the sidewalk. I'm, I just like can't with cigarette smoke. I just, I personally can't do it. I mm-hmm. can't even, I've actually never smoked a cigarette. Yeah. I don't know. You. I don't, <laughs> I'm not like bragging. I'm like, cause I don't trust myself. I'm mm. like, what's the best that can happen? I like it. And then I like cigarettes. No, they're so gross. So, I mean, what happened? Just jewel like a normal yeah, person. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, for me personally, faux pas, but some people can make it look so cool. And I know that that's like, that gets you <laughs> right? against the like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what we're trying to fight against. But like, you know, like the other day I was at um, a restaurant in Tribeca and I saw Chloe Sevigny, who's like the most like iconic, iconic. New York yeah. girl. And she she and her four girlfriends left in the middle of their dinner to go have a smoke break. And I was like, you know what? They can they can do it. Yeah, I guess they, yeah. Get, they get a person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're like, put it in my mouth, Me? Chloe. <laughs> Blow it in my mouth. <laughs> what about taking the amenities from your hotel room? Like the cute little shampoos and stuff. Fair fucking game. Yeah. I was recently talking on Giggly Squad how like I always take the Delta headphones. Headphones are like $17. Mm-hmm. 
I will take every Delta Hub home. I appreciate it. Thank you. They're here for a reason. Yeah. And yet some of these hotels, it smells good. And you never know <laughs> when you're going to be at a hotel where you don't have it. And right. you need it. Yeah. I have so much stuff that I think I'm going to need that I never use. But like, it just makes me feel good. But you never know. One day you might. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes you're traveling. It's like an Airbnb and they don't have the shampoo right. conditioner yes. stock. And it's like, you know what? I can't prepare because I stole from my hotel. Also yep. a pen. And I love a pen. Mm-hmm. I love a pen. I, I take pen. I take pens from restaurants all the time. Yeah. yeah. Just like, look the other way. Let's go. You know? <laughs> We flew mint on the way here and the guy sitting next to me left his little travel bag. I was like, I'm going to take that. You know, if you're going to leave it. <laughs> oh, it's a travel it. bag they give you. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. Those are good. I and like to stock my products. guest room with them. There we go. So when people stay and they have like a flight back, they have their little travel bag. Wait, you're so cute. so cute. Yeah, so I took She's his so for hospitable. my future guests in my new house. <laughs> 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 you might be one of them. <laughs> okay, what about, here's one close to home, sharing locations. Wait, I actually don't know what happened, so now I'm nervous. Because I okay, so I'm, okay, I now I want to hear her thoughts okay. first. <laughs> Take the plunge. I personally love when people know where I am because I don't know where I am. Mm-hmm. Like my mom never has to worry if like the plane landed because she's following me. Right. It's just like a safety thing. It's like I have nothing to hide. So like. I would like people to know where I am. Yeah. I'll call I'm my mom and be like, I'm lost. Way. And she's like, you need to take a left. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have the worst sense of direction. Um, but yeah, my, yeah. Mm-hmm. I fuck with location. Yeah. I like it. Same. I would say Find My Friends is one of the least used apps on my phone because I don't share my location with mm-hmm. anybody. But why not? I have, writing. Exactly. Honestly, not even oh nothing. God. I just feel like sometimes it's TMI. Like I just want to like have a Sunday. Where, where are just, you like, going though? When you let you know. <laughs> if, if, if I told you, I would, if I wanted to tell you, Actually, I would share my location. The only with reason me. I wouldn't want to share my location with people is because they'd be like, she hasn't moved from her bed for seven <laughs> days. <laughs> but also, I have friends who are, love it. Like they're obsessed with it, and yeah. I watch them use the app. And yeah. I don't think it's creepy. I just don't. I see them open it and zoom in on, oh, I wonder why yeah. Olivia is in Midtown right now. On a I know Saturday. once my mom was like, are you with your ex right now? <laughs> it's like, because like, he was in Brooklyn. It's entertaining, but like, for me, nobody, nobody needs to know. Okay. But honestly, wait, what's your sign? Leo. Wait, so am I. Mm. Mm. August, August? So August is my sister. Like, <gasps> my sister's the 19th. Look at all of Look you guys. Us. What are you? Taurus. Mm. Coming up. Mm. Oh yes, mm-hmm. but we for the record, know. it was it's not creepy. So I don't think I how it played out in the show completely normal because I have friends like you who love using that. Yeah, and, that. and so. I'm sorry if I'm gonna check on you to ask if you got home safe and you say yes and then you send some weird cryptic emoji. Going I might that. check, and then I saw that Max was at Katie's apartment and not his own house, and that's how we found out they. Uh, but I, lo- I love how I'm witnessing all this for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you caught up? Are you watching? She's like, I don't watch anything on Bravo anymore. I was and like, listen, okay, that reveal opened up. I support theory. women's fair in the game. arts. <laughs> I support women in the arts. Wait. I think that reveal is exactly what this I season do needed, have to So s- thank you for your service. You know, I mean, thank you, Brock, I guess, for being messy. I you, was Brock. so mad at Brock, him. Brock is learning from the best. I love so. when the men are messy because you don't see it for them. And then you're like, thank you for your service. I like, also, I do have to say. How many times does Sheena have to get the ball rolling with some storylines? How many times? You know, I mean, but here's the thing, Katie. If you're going to bang a guy who's banged like everyone else on this show, it's probably going to come out. And he was about to tell Schwartz. So it was going to come out regardless. It just came out with Brock From being an messy. Source. It, very, yeah. It was not supposed to come out that way. It was just like, I know, you know, but you tell Schwartz, I'm not saying anything. Of course, Brock knew. He was I didn't right know next Max to me. was still in LA. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I can tell you where he is right now. I have his location. <laughs> <laughs> Might be in San Diego. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, oh using a seat for your giant purse or bag. A seat where? Maybe at a restaurant. Maybe, you know, it's a Southwest flight. <laughs> <laughs> so Paige has this like doohickey that it's like a magnet that you could put it on a table yep. and it hangs your bag. Uh-huh. I was like, this is the most genius H- never seen that. Like, QVC I've had one of those and I've seen. never used it. I know. But yeah. It's the kind of thing that you're like, I wouldn't Paige actually would do use. it. Paige yes. would use it. It has like a little like yep. jewel. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes I, as a girl, mm-hmm. I'm like, I got this bag. It's nice. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to put it on the New York City floor where someone could just grab it. Right. So, but I, if it was a crowded place, I, pr- I wouldn't put it on a 
Yeah, like it depends a, on the boarding, context. At my gate at the airport, I take up two seats. Mm-hmm. I put my, I put my. Oh seat well, gates at, me. at the airport, it's too intimate anyway. If you sit next to know, anyone directly, that's fucked up. Serial killer vibe. That's, I will stand <laughs> instead of sitting on a stranger's lap at the airport. Yeah, no, listen. Yeah, if, uh, you know when they sit next to you when there's room as well. I'm like, well, now I need to like leave. Mm. I need to cancel my flight. <laughs> I also love when you're going out to dinner and it's three of you and there's a fourth chair at the table. You can use that as the bag yes. catch-all. Love yes. that. Yeah, yes. totally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, last one. Using the bathroom of the gender you don't identify with because there's a line for yours. Fair game. Fair game. I say fair yeah. game just because specifically like at my stand-up shows, it's all girls. Yeah. And they'll be like such a line. They're missing the jokes. And I will literally say, go in the men's room. Mm-hmm. I give you guys consent. There's four boyfriends here. They're good. Yeah. yeah. But also just like communicate with people. A lot of the concerts I go to are heavily female audiences. Yeah. And that happens all the time. So you're just and like in the bathroom like, with the girls. I think as long as you communicate, obviously you don't want to be in a weird situation. Yeah. But like if, go in with a group of girls and you're safe. Or if you're cool, just like peeing in the stall where there's a urinal across the way. Like, or maybe fine. you could like meet guys in the bathroom. Oh my God. Yeah. Maybe that's something. a new dating. <laughs> <laughs> do, you ever, will... do you ever meet guys in the bathroom? No. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Imagine you're like, we met at the stall I clam up in Applebee's. The urinal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't look, don't look. <laughs> you don't bring your pants all the way to your heels. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> is that Nick or is it? Or is it confident? A when, if a guy puts it to his ankles. Please. <laughs> if you're doing that and you're under the age of like 80 years old, like I have serious questions for you. <laughs> Though I will say I went to this bar in New York, this gay bar, and um, I, it was like a you're one urinal, one stall mm-hmm. situation. There were two other guys in there. Something was happening against the sink. And I just sort of uh, maneuver around them to get to the urinal. Excuse and was, me. It's part of me. <laughs> exactly. Fresh meat coming through. <laughs> Fresh meat coming through. <laughs> I love love it. it. (laughs) I love it. All right. We're going to take a quick little break and then we'll be right back. All right. So imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices. So Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. I was recently looking to upgrade some stuff in mine and Summer Moon's new closets And they have things like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for only $50, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops, and they even have timeless 14 karat gold jewelry pieces. I'm telling you, everything that I have gotten from Quince for myself and for summer are the cutest pieces, the softest fabrics, and pieces that I'm going to want to pass down to other kids and cousins and friends because they're too good and my kid is growing too fast. Also, I want to mention that Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, which I absolutely love. So recently, I got a bunch of new matching sets for summer, just gearing up for the spring and summer, pun intended, seasons to come. I got some new little crop tops for myself and from her winter to summer wardrobe, Quince has hooked us up. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash honey for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash honey to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash honey. All right. Well, as we know, Lisa Vanderpump is as real as it gets. The queen of hospitality herself is now here with her extensive expertise. Having run over 35 restaurants in a boutique hotel, she has become a household name due to her iconic reality TV career. And that is not stopping with Vanderpump Villa. Viewers can expect to see Lisa's unique style and cheeky personality on full display as she leads a brand new villa staff as the host of the luxurious French countryside villa Chateau Rosabelle. Her unique brand of glamour and biting humor will bring instant awareness and affinity that differentiates this show from the rest. Vanderpump Villa provides an entertaining and unfiltered portrait of life, both saturated in and starkly without privilege. At the heart of the series is the staff, a group of attractive and opinionated team members who all have a unique or lack thereof expertise 
that have entered the villa to work, play, and clash under the same roof as their guest. Throughout the series, new groups of guests will arrive for a unique and lavish vacation, and the staff will have to be ready to cater to every whim. This series offers a behind-the-scenes look at how the staff are pushed to their limits to execute these one-of-a-kind celebrations while having to maintain composure and professionalism, as this is an opportunity of a lifetime for each of them. Watch new episodes of Vanderpump Villa every Monday, now on Hulu. Okay, so this week, I know you're not watching, but it's season 11, episode 11 of Vanderpump Rules. <gasps> Literally, can you believe? 11 11. No, and I'm very superstitious the, about the that. tattoo. Oh, yes, and I see 11 11 everywhere. S- same. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely a bit of a numbers girl, but like TBD if that's an interest in numerology and angel numbers or just a symptom of my OCD. <laughs> Not too sure. Maybe a bit <laughs> of Are you H. just always on your phone? That's why you see 11 right? 11 every day. <laughs> but um, okay, so anyone listening, I just want to say, you know, feel free to take a moment, set an intention, mm. make a wish. Mm. 11 11. Your guides are with you. Mm. Mm. It's all okay, happening. Okay, set. What are your thoughts on numbers? Because you mentioned that you live on the 13th floor. Mm-hmm. So so I'm half Italian, and apparently in Sicily, 13 is a lucky number. And I also got married uh-huh. on Friday the 13th. Right. Oh. It was my mom's birthday. Oh my God. Yes. People, first of all, I think it was cheaper. And second of all, I was <laughs> yeah. like, everything in life, you can put your own perspective yeah. on it. And I Agreed. really think like life, we can't control what happens to us. We can control how we respond. And if you really believe things are bad luck like it will follow you Mm -hmm. but like i really believe my my italian ancestors are like get married on the 13th let's go save some money (laughs) yeah i love that no totally i did a tuesday in mexico because it was cheaper and i thought less people would come (gasps) didn't happen happen. (laughs) currently can i tell y'all that when you're a parent and you are planning your kid's birthday it's fucking stressful. Mm. So the last two years, I've had more people at Summer Moon's birthday than we had at our wedding. Like 150 Wait, people Wait, and you last feel pressure. Year. Like it has to be a party. Yes. I've already <laughs> set the precedent. The it has to go yeah. off. Literally. Okay. So it's so, free for one each And then you have to invite. know all the kids if they're allergic to yes. anything. Oh, no, no nuts. Just no oh. nuts is Just always no safe. Okay. For sure. But so this year, my mom was like, Sheena, you're moving. You know, let's take the pressure off you. Just book an indoor playground place. It'll be so much easier for you. Chuck E. Cheese. (laughs) It's called Candyland. It's not so much easier for me. And it's probably costing me the same, if not more. Thanks, mom. (laughs) But now there's a capacity at this place. So now I'm having- It is. The hottest ticket in town. But so exclusive that some of my closest friends- who either have newborns or kids who are like over the age of five. I'm like having to tell them I would love to have you there, but um, I-, I can't because of capacity. And that anyone who knows me knows that gives me severe exactly. anxiety. Yes. I am such a people pleaser. Yes. I want to have everyone there. That's why I had 150 the people time. last year. And now here I am having to text some of my closest friends like, hi, I love you so much. And I know you've asked about Summer's birthday, but in order to have Summer's Closest like 30 to 35 friends there, you know, her whole dance drama. class and everyone else. <laughs> I can't have all of my friends Listen. there. Someone's like, if you don't have Ashton, I'm never talking to you again, mom. <laughs> this is also exposure therapy for me. I feel like being a people pleaser, but I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not making her birthday about me this yeah. year. You know, last year, yeah. a little bit, the first two years, yeah. they're kind of, you know, they're about the parents. Yeah, yes. And it's easing for sure. They're not remembering party, it. 100%. They can't remember. This uh. year, I'm like, she has made so many new friends. She's in dance. She has new neighbor friends. <laughs> so that cute. It's about the kids. Do you, but remember now the, I'm like, do you remember the MTV show, My Super Sweet 16? Yes. That's forget? what I'm envisioning for <laughs> Summer Moon, being like, That's what it was three. last year. Carrying me in on a throne. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So. She flies in on a helicopter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's going to be a great party. But Pitbull's I'm just like, performing. Oh God, it's giving me <laughs> so much like the anxiety. But I feel the she gets, the less people she's going to allow you to invite to her birthday. So this is, right. this is like a, no. the ball is rolling slowly. That's yeah. Also, like, she ripped open your vagina. Like, the first couple of years Literally. should be about you. Yeah. Completely yeah. agree. Yeah. You so, right. um... <laughs> To all of those not <laughs> on the invite list, I'm sorry. I wish everyone could be there. And I was like, honestly, I'm just going to go back to the 150 person party next year. Mm-hmm. It's better for, like, for my all. anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People are going to be like, did you get into Summer's party? No, but was... That's also what I knew was going to start happening the day I sent the invites out. So I had to say when I sent the invite, just so you know, this is only going to the yeah. toddler parents first. Yes. I need to see how many toddlers And then like, come. do we like the toddler? Has the toddler engaged with Summer recently? Do we like their you parents? Know? Yeah. That's what I would think about. 
It's just oh, you it's, tell Summer to cross people off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, honey, here's a pink highlighter. It's been so hard. Go in. We got to cut people. Cut them. I'm em. just like, this is what I got for listening to my mom. You know what? She was trying to just make things easier for me, take something off my plate. She knows mm. how much the last two parties have been just planning wise. So, yeah, let's just do it in an indoor playground where we have <laughs> to cut the guest list. Go. Like, Well, you're, you know what you have to do? You have to have an after party where you invite everyone. Like a so, wedding, you know? Thankfully, my birthday is the following week. Okay, so I'm like, so everyone's done. invited to my birthday. We're going to do it at a bar. Everyone can come <laughs> and, you know, open their own tab. I'm so <laughs> exhausted not on mine. just hearing like one week of her parties. <sighs> like, I can't. How do you do it? I don't know how you do it. I don't, I don't know. Do you get hungover still? Um, so here's the thing. I never really got hungover before. But recently, there's been a bit. You got of a headache miles. once. Yeah, got a, I got a headache, <laughs> and I was like, "That was that one mm -hmm. last shot at the end of the right. night, where it's like it's always that last shot." Did I need that? Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. of course not. But on Tuesdays, if I do watch the show and I do get a little bit in the comment section, mm -hmm. you know, we did. We had an back. extra shot. Mm -hmm. And then we had another, and I was like, mm -hmm. I might pay for this tomorrow, but mm -hmm. it's okay worth because it. it tastes good, mm -hmm. and it was worth it. Whatever you need so, to cope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I respect your health. Thanks. <laughs> 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 okay, speaking of filming and stuff. So mm -hmm. this week, I don't know if you've seen online anywhere, there was leaked audio that surfaced of Tamara and Shannon, who were arguing while filming for Real Housewives of Orange County. During filming of season 10 of Vanderpump Rules, I felt like there were more leaks than ever. I mean, there was TMZ hiding in the <gasps> Sir Alley as Tom and I are having our first filmed wow. conversation. And I screamed at him and then that's on TMZ. There's a photo with a fan taken. There's just all of this. And I feel like there seems to be a shift in the audience and fans taking more of an active role. It's like, I feel like they're like our extra cast member at this mm -hmm. point. But... I feel like it's also an additional arm of storytelling on the shows now. So my question is, what do we think about this? And is it ultimately a good thing as it shows more interest and involvement? Or is it spoiling storylines? What a great question. That is a great question. I'm personally, I err on the side of things not leaking. Mm -hmm. Re Salt Lake City last season, nobody had any idea about what was going to go on on that Wild. season. And that's what made the reality of Auntie's thing yes. so big. It was so unexpected. Nobody knew it was happening. And like, it makes the impact greater. Mm -hmm. But if like, like I was frustrated for you guys that it feels like you are, have already sort of watched a version of the season. If you are paying attention to yeah. that, I try to not pay attention to all that. Cause I'm like, this is like Dumois culture yeah. on steroids and like, totally. and I'm just like, I don't, it's ruin it, it ruins the viewing experience in some respects, but I think like the group photo, <laughs> obviously that came back to bite you, but like Everything I do appreciate bite, how that was woven into the show because it does <laughs> yeah. like, break the fourth it's wall real, to a certain way you know? to a certain extent. And like mm -hmm. I'm a big I'm a big advocate for you guys in particular breaking the fourth wall a little mm -hmm. bit more. And I think that was a good example of it working. And so like yeah. the Tamara and Shannon thing, we have no idea the context. We the knew context, they weren't friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like that kind of like, you know. It kind of helps promote the season, I guess. But otherwise, we don't really know what's going on on that show right now. And yeah. like, I'm happy with that. Yeah, see, and I feel like that is the frustrating thing for me especially is oftentimes when there are these type of leaks, a small clip, a photo, whatever, it can be completely taken out of context. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know why I was standing next to Tom in that photo for maybe mm -hmm. six months, maybe never. Maybe you listen to shenanigans. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't. But it doesn't always represent the entire truth of the story, the dynamics of the cast. And then it's like that interpretation almost can become the main narrative it until the season you. airs. It's yeah. so, and you nailed it, and you nailed it, both of you. Reality TV is all about context. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if I say, fuck you, bitch, and I said it in response to someone saying something so horrible mm -hmm. to me, or if they take that out and it makes it sound like I just lost my mind. Mm. Yeah. That's the same thing that I said, but it's about context. I do yeah. like when like authentic stuff gets leaked, but I don't like when, um, yeah, people tried to make up the narrative before it happens. Yeah. Um, but the editors must hate <sighs> it. I know. Hate Like I know. they're like, okay, we got to switch it up because now people think this. Um, and which it's, it's, but the truth is, is like Vanderpump, I don't think it was supposed they ever thought it would get this big. No. So like it is this interesting time, but the fact that they started to let you guys break the fourth wall a little Finally. bit made it better mm -hmm. because 
every, the audience is smart. They're like, yeah. we know you guys are making money now. We know that you guys are fighting about like the show. Mm -hmm. So like, can we at least, cause I hate when the audience is just confused mm -hmm. and then they don't enjoy the show cause they're confused and you're like, the, the trying to make sense so of good. something. Like, the instead real of just saying, I saw what you said 100%. about me on Watch What Happens Live. Yes, it was like, exactly. well that one time in New York, yes, it was exactly. like, yeah, it's always yeah. in New York. And then they flash to Watch What Happens Live right. anyway. So like, it's like, I, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> I do just think for you guys, it's like, these are, this is your life. Yeah. And like, I loved how with the group photo, the whole kind of next thing was like, trying to get Ariana to comment and sort of like dispel some mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. bad blood, I guess, that it was was brewing. And like that, again, it's like, it's basically like put out a statement, you know what I mean? And like, like work with your team and put something out. And like that is yeah. what your lives are in a lot of, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Like it just reflects yeah. your actual reality. No, totally. Yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, it is a good problem to have because of if course. nobody cared, you know, we're all it's good press. out of a job. Mm -hmm. But personally, it's frustrating. Well, yeah, if you're filming a scene and they don't know why you're upset and then yeah. you just look like you're being loony. Totally. When they don't know what it's from, that's, it's crazy. And do Even, you get in trouble when you, when, do you get in trouble if you were to like speak out about something that leaks during filming? Because you're supposed to like bite your tongue. Yeah, we're supposed to bite our tongue. Yeah. Even like the whole Schwartz make out that wasn't a make out. I was mm -hmm. just like, God, when is this episode airing? Can right. we yeah. just get this whole right. story but it's, out so this there? Is the thing. Some cast members will try to get ahead of storylines. Yeah. And then some will say it's but like you never really know what they're ultimately the gonna, gonna, gonna show. Gonna so show. when someone gets too ahead of it, I always <clears> think, <throat> oh you're like worried, like mm -hmm. you know what happened. Mm -hmm. Um and I think when people don't try to get ahead of it, I'm like, oh you really thought that they were going to show something they didn't show. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very, look, yeah. reality TV, it's psychological warfare. Yeah. So many things get taken out of context. So kind of on the same, same area. Someone sent me a screenshot from a Reddit board yesterday. It was like a detailed fan account who said, they saw me at a bar Sunday evening with Brock after Ariana's show and I looked quite upset. And I was showing Brock something on my phone, speculating I must have been beefing with Ariana. And I'm like, okay. In reality, what I had seen was that Jax made a disgusting comment about me and was saying some untrue things about VPR. But what bothered me the most was Jax. So he was at his self-named bar, Jax's, and uh, <laughs> seemingly drunk, probably had, you know, a lot of pasta that night to eat. <laughs> And he said, had the audacity to say that I'm always out partying and leave my child to be raised by my mother. Jesus. <clears throat> so first of all, the irony of this coming from the guy sitting at his own bar partying without his child, like that's not lost on me. But secondly, it's just so far from the truth and he should know this. 95% of the time when I'm out, it usually is a work thing. And it's also she knew you don't have to defend yourself. But I feel like I do. It's also after I put my kid to bed. No. And it's so frustrating because I'm like, yes, I do do a lot of stuff. Mm. And I do go out often, but I'm like, I can't make plans before 9 p.m. And if that means that I'm gonna be tired the next day, I'm still gonna wake up with my kid. Sheena, you do and not have to fucking explain that you love your child because everyone knows you do. And people are saying fucked up shit. And you're also going through season which is so intense right now and you're you're being judged by everyone and like Literally. you're just so fucking strong right now and like I want to hug you and kiss you like because it's just a lot and you almost feel dirty because you feel like people are looking at you in a way that you just don't you didn't consent to. Well, and I had literally so much mom guilt about coming yeah. out to New York a day early to support Ariana and see yeah. her last show. And Brock and I went back and forth with this and he was like, Sheena, I really want to go see her show. And he's like, I know you've already seen it, but like, I really want to go. And I'm like, honey, we have Coachella coming up. And like that also, I have two work commitments. I'm not just going to party at a festival. Like I'm going to work and make money. And I said, I was like, I just don't think I can do an extra day in New York. Like, I need to just spend all of Sunday with Summer. We're going to be gone. Then we're gone again. And he was just like, you know, she'll be fine. Like, I really want to do this night with you. Just give me an extra night. And so then I see that he says like, oh, she and I'm like, he's probably making comments like, oh, Sheena's just out in New York. Oh, Sheena's going to be at Coachella because my mom is taking Summer to Cruz's birthday party this weekend because I'll be at Coachella working. And it just really... 
upset me. And then it's like this Reddit thing. It was like, oh, Sheena and Ariana must be beefy. And I'm like, no, yeah. I was low key sad because I was away from my daughter as mm. I'm reading this when I'm just mm. there trying to support my friend. Mm -hmm. And you showed up and you should feel so great about that. And mm -hmm. we've seen on this season that like Brock is is trying to alleviate some of that mm -hmm. guilt that you're feeling. Yeah. And I think and he's clearly such a great partner in that way to you. And like you should not feel any of this guilt. And for him to basically latch on to you to try to get a headline in that way is so gross and so crosses so many lines. And yeah. I'm so sorry you're going through that. Yeah. Like you are a brand where like for you to make money you have to physically be places yeah. you have to physically show yes. yourself you're not yeah. sending emails all day so for you to support your family and i'm getting chills but it's like summer's gonna be like so proud that like holy shit my mom is a fucking badass and like it's incredible what yeah. you're doing and so like honestly the second i heard him say that and you you're defending yourself i just was like wait, 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 don't even <sighs> give it energy i know don't give it energy i know i um, just and we love you and it's coming from the guy who literally said before he opened a bar that opening a bar can break up a, a relationship and oh. he still opened the bar and it's like and look at where you're at i don't know why anybody's taking what he's saying seriously and i don't think people do it just but it's that it's is what upset me, and I'm like showing Brock in the like universe. that he said this. Yeah, the universe. It's, it's bad. Well, I'm having the mom guilt of leaving her mm -hmm. an extra night to come and support my friend. I was mm -hmm. so back and forth with this, mm -hmm. and it was just like, mm -hmm. do we go? Do we not? No, but then I'm like, you know what? I want to go. I want to show up for her, whether or not we're speaking every single day. Like friendships go through ups and downs, but I'm still gonna show up mm -hmm. and. That just pissed me off because I'm also like, you know what, dude? Let's not throw stones when you live in a glass fucking house, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know why he wants to say lies about me, but I will say if he keeps doing this, I will have no problem telling the truth about him. So I'll just leave that there. Also seeing Vanderpump Rules is scripted. Oh my God. Scripted. <laughs> scripted. Sorry, like, you know what? I'm on next week. Scripted. Well, guess like Bravo does both shows. Bro. So whatever's going yeah. on with Vanderpump is going on at the Valley. And so, I like, wish it was true. Right, I right, wish right, I could right. say, <laughs> like, oh no, why is he acting that was in the show. script. Yeah. Like, are you kidding oh God, me? I'm back on this scripted show, quote unquote. <sighs> like, like for so long. I'm sorry, dude. Well, like, yeah. Once we were about? filming and we were at a restaurant and someone was like, I saw the cast reading from a script when there were menus. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, you're at this restaurant reading from scripts and then talking to each other. And we're like, you mean ordering from the menu? People want to believe that so bad. Also, yeah. let's be honest. Reality TV people, we're not memorizing lines. Okay? No. <laughs> <Certainly> not. <laughs> I'm not remembering my lines. Cut. Literally. If I could first say cut, that would be amazing. Like, you just can't make this shit up. So like. Yeah. <laughs> That does bring up a question. Do you think that some of these shows should be more scripted? Like, would that help, you know, some storylines? Like uh, the hills, you know? Right. I do think it would help some mental health and some relationships yeah, to be like, sure. look, she's going to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. We need her to ask you this. I don't want it to ruin the relationship. And I think shows would last longer yeah. if they didn't have to, like, like, people get really hurt personally mm -hmm. where it would be a little more i think what vanderpump is good at is you guys are actually pretty professional to be like we're making a good show where some shows will be like i'll never like work with this person again mm -hmm. over not like cheating affairs over like very subtle things yeah yeah so it, it creates more of a longevity if people are like we're in this together we're a team and we're creating an amazing tv show based on our lives right. yeah right i think it creates longevity if there's that same shared mentality yes but i think the problem that the hills ran into towards the end was just sort of like it was sort of like a crumbling castle of like it, it was it was too blurred i mm -hmm. think the lines there and then they when that ending happened when they like pulled away the backdrop yeah. or whatever it was like i think it just sort of they tried to bring the show back and it just was never gonna work it wasn't the same it was never gonna no work. Like, yeah. people would have watched their real lives totally I think, but i do have to say some seasons are definitely forced narratives yeah, or storylines more than others like sometimes i'll see it and it's like it was true but i don't like the perspective they chose like mm. like something a fight an example can, of that no a fight can happen and like they're showing it from the perspective of one person and not the other person and i'm like because other people jumped on their bandwagon yeah so i th and i think some seasons are really good because they got the gold and some seasons they don't get the gold and it seems more forced so I not all seasons that. are created equal yeah i also think sometimes in relationships there's like maybe a kernel of something that's like a slight conflict, but they've probably had it figured out behind the scenes. But mm -hmm. that's just the only thing that we can kind of go with this mm -hmm. year with that couple. Ooh. And then it, I, I can I read into that right you know, sometimes during seasons. I'm just like, 
I kind of think that these two people have it totally figured out and they're great, but they just needed something to like be sparring over a little yes. bit. Yeah. And, but they probably have the shared mentality like you talked about of like, we're going to be fine. We just have to kind of hash well, this Well, people out. don't talk about the pressure you feel on a show where they're like, what's your storyline? Right. 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 They always go, she's trying to find a storyline and they go, no, I'm trying to keep a job. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because I could be peaceful. <laughs> I mean, what did everyone think season 11 of Vanderpump Rules was going to be with where Tom and Ariana left things off? Was one of them supposed to not come back to the show? Is that what the fans wanted to see? No. You want to see yep. the fallout. You want to see the rebuild. You want to see mm -hmm. everything that happened post Scandal. I mean, it is. A, at the end of the day, it is it is like a social experiment. Because right. in real life, let's be honest, they should not they would probably never talk again, but we want to see the social experiment mm -hmm. of this group doing their thing. Like, yeah. for example, I'll have something awkward happen to me. And the next thing you know, I'm like on a boat alone with the person that I just had a fight with. And it's, that's what makes it interesting. Right. 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 And I feel like you're in your season, what the friction that you guys are coming up against is like, some of you are like pushing for the rebuild and the sort of the reconnection yeah. between some of these people because you're on a show and that's how you move forward. But then some people on your show, and I think rightfully so in a lot of ways, but like they want to keep the boundary because it's personal mm -hmm. and they don't want to start talking to somebody again who completely betrayed them because they're on a show with them. And like, but th th they're, those are different. Also, you know, it, it, it's, it's, there's a friction. Yeah. There. I, I love that we're really getting to the bottom of it all. But at the <laughs> end of the day, it becomes about egos. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I do love, though, that you're seeing the fourth wall finally come down on the show this season and way more of that to come, which is so awesome. It's one of the things I love about like the Kardashians, the D'Amelio shows, the ones that are talking about the show on the show. Mm -hmm. We finally do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because sometimes I feel like in the past you'd be fighting about something kind of show related or something a little too out of the box mm -hmm. and then they would replace it with uh, like something that works for the narrative right. and then people are mad at you because of the like fake totally. thing you're fighting over when it's like no the real thing this is, is actually yeah. what it is yeah right. like we're fighting but not about that yeah <laughs> and viewers have gotten uh -huh. so smart to like read those things so you yeah. might as well like not treat them like idiots and like yeah just give them what they want which yeah is to t talking about what it's like to be on a show yeah for sure. Yeah. And I don't think you have to do it on every Bravo show. Like, I think Housewives can maintain a lot of the mm -hmm. sort of artifice. But I think on, like, Vanderpump Rules and Summer House to a certain extent, it's sort of like, I think some of the younger shows, it just, like, feels more natural. Yeah. yeah. Especially with sense. the social media of it all. Totally. Like, we know what's totally. going on. Yeah. When someone leaks something, we know what's yeah. going on. But then you have to, like, make up a reason why you're mad. <laughs> Even though, like, you know, like, they try to fuck you up in the press. Literally. And then you have to be like, why did you... Like, look at me like that. Right. <laughs> I know. It's so much more interesting when you can just say the real reason. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I love about the reunions. It's like, no, say it all. Talk about it. That's, That's what we're here to do. Yeah. Oh, but on that note about how the Bravoverse is evolving, I feel like there haven't been too many reality stars who have, like, genuinely evolved out of the Bravo world and just, you know, established careers into that, you know, just outside of the Bravo fame. Bethany is one, you know, people say as an entrepreneur, talk show host, Nene, you know, with her acting and whatnot. But like, we have Hannah fucking Burner. Mm -hmm. So you made me cry. Literally, me cry. Netflix special. Like, Come on now. that's huge. Yeah, I love you. That is something no, that only the top, top, top comedians oh get. God. And like, she is right there. So it's like, I just How are two of us crying in this? <laughs> are you going to cry? To, to, I tend two to make you cry. <laughs> no, I think the way that you've spun out up? your couple seasons on Summer House, has, it's one of the more impressive post-show runs that we've ever seen. Because yeah, like, you. and you also, the way that you went out on the show wasn't necessarily totally fair. You were the, mm -mm. you took the hit that season, you know, and it was a, it was a good season of reality TV, mm -hmm. but as a person, <laughs> it, it's not easy to go through that, I'm sure. And I think the way that you have just leaned into what you're really amazing at and you've just thrown shit at the wall. I've, I've been watching it. You know what Thank I mean? Like you. I've seen how your career has evolved and now it's just, again, we've gotten to a ne the Netflix special, which is just like, again, that's, that's, that's the pinnacle of, yeah. of uh, that's a goal for so many people. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it was a goal of yours. And I don't know, just as somebody who's been watching you and, and all that, it's, I'm so impressed Thank by you. you. Thank and I'm you. really happy for you. Thank too. you. And I do have to say, like, I was like getting emotional. Cause I'm like, when I, like 
was off the show and everything, I really was like, well, I'm never going to, these people are going to shun me. And like, it's a very kind of, you feel really lonely. Mm -hmm. Um, And I like the fact that I'm sitting here still with you, still friends with you. And it just shows like, keep just trying to like figure out yourself and working on yourself and like you will eventually get to the right places um and I did have some really fun seasons but then there were times where I'm like I don't think I really fit in right now where I don't feel like Mm -hmm. I am good at this in this kind of way um so the universe really does like kick your ass sometimes but I remember early on like you came to one of my stand-up shows Mm -hmm. when I was like I feel like she shouldn't be talking to me like that's not oh. gonna like look good <laughs> just like aesthetically like I know that you deal with a lot of bullshit and I'm like she does not have to post a photo with me and you just were like you make me laugh and like I'm excited for you I've always been a fan and that's what Brock and I were saying this where it's like you should be a fan of your friends you know yeah. and mm-hmm. that's why I was so excited to come and see Ariana again because I'm like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a fan her Broadway show incredible fucking incredible mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <great>. not, and <laughs> same and so I was so happy to be there for the first and the last show but it's like you know you should be a fan of your friends and I love going to support anything my friends do, especially yeah. live performances. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, and reality TV, it's so difficult. And some people, like, have some other interests, too. So right. it's really cool to see them do that. And I remember once when I was shooting Summer House, one of the cast members went to one of my stand-up shows, and she pulled me aside after, and she was like, wait, you're so happy when you do this. Like, this is what you're meant to do. Like, they knew, kind mm-hmm. of. Um, but, like, Bravo gave me... The f- it was the first time I was like, wait, I fucking love being on camera. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, bravo. And even, like, I still am cool with Andy. And, mm-hmm. like, he's been so supportive. So it's, like, I honestly, it all kind of, it's, like, a very positive thing when you look back at yeah. it all. And I also think after leaving the show, because I really did not have, like, legit, like, nothing really bad happened with anyone. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no reason to talk bad about anyone. Like, I really had no more, like, there weren't any storylines. Like, I just was, like, I'm just do me so there hasn't mm-hmm. been really any drama from anything so well, I yeah think that's also part of what helps i think it it's good when somebody doesn't go scorched earth on what they just yeah because there was the really totally not a lot ever. going on i just kind of right. was like i see what happened i accept it and yeah you can't be angry but we've seen the opposite happen yeah. and like that does it, it maybe for like a couple months it gets you a lot of good press and opportunities but like yeah. it's not that's not that doesn't give you long at the end of the day it was show. it was a business decision that was made and uh-huh. like mm-hmm. i really do like i'm rooting for all of them and i think they're rooting for me so it's like yeah the, it, it, the really whole, nice. i did have to work through therapy of the, basically the whole concept of like just any negative feelings you feel towards other people is like not helping you. Mm -hmm. And like, I really do feel like I just like to surround myself. Like even like with Paige, like the fact that we're still friends is like beautiful. And like, cause we've been through hard things makes us closer. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that like, we both really do root for each other. Like, it's just fun to surround myself with cool, driven, creative people. Yeah. That's all I want to do. Agreed. I yeah. love it. So other than the Netflix special, what is next? Oh my God. It's funny cause I've been on the road forever yeah. and it was all about shooting the special. Like live performances filmed are like totally different than a random show. Yeah. I was like, it was a crazy experience and now I have to edit it. And I think it's going to come out around September. And then I'm honestly very open. I don't like to be put in a box. I get Mm -hmm. bored easily. I like to just take on projects. I might try some acting, some... But then they were in this weird place where, like, creating your own content is kind of king right now. Yeah. Which is hard because I'm, like... I grew up and I'm like, I want to be a movie star. But like, everyone's like, make Same. TikToks. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I can make I you know. TikToks. No, it's so fun. <laughs> They're like, make YouTube videos. So yeah, I'm just like creating and like, honestly, just keep trying to keep my mental health above board. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job and <laughs> I you. love following you and watching all of your videos. You're one of the few people where I will watch your video in its entirety. Oh my, that's you actually know? the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> also, I do have to say, whenever I'm in like a crazy situation, like I know I was shooting the special and I looked at someone and I go, it's all happening. <laughs> like, that is so, yes. this is, isn't that crazy? Like your words have affected so it's many people. I like I think I was getting my makeup done. I just went, it's all happening and everyone laughed. I love it. But it's such a true, like, you were in the moment. You were you were recognizing like, how big it was for you. And then I just see Sheena's ear. face, like, smiling yes. ear to ear. Like, it's all <laughs> happening, bitches. Like, it's just so cool. It's girlhood. Know. I love it. <laughs> so happy. But I appreciate, you're so, thank yeah. you for the kind words, no, for real. of course. It's, I love real. following your career. And I can't wait to hear the music you're about to drop. I can't Same. wait. So good. So we just wait. finished recording, too. And then we have one more that I'm still writing. And that one is going to also be the title of the entire EP. So I think we're going to put out 
out one more single and then the last two songs will come out when the whole EP is Do out. Do you ever vlog like the process or like the in the studio? No, literally. Because I'm obsessed with that. Justice, like, just <laughs> sent me. <laughs> well, what's so funny <laughs> is right as I'm walking in, Justice, who edits all of my videos, Shout texts Justice. me for a Patreon exclusive and I was like I'm not gonna have time to watch and approve this until a little bit later but yes we do we vlog all of the behind the scenes stuff because I'm obsessed of that with gets music documentaries like I just watched Billie Eilish on Apple oh, TV it was one. so I just love seeing musicians like in the studio like what if we use this does that rhyme with this and like, yeah <laughs> my mind just so doesn't work that way <laughs> no I know it's like yeah, but yeah it's I'm so impressed. cool yeah okay one more quick little break and we'll be right back all right, it's Factor Fridays. It's the time to eat stress-free this spring. Factor has delicious, ready-to-eat meals. They're always fresh, never frozen, in just two minutes in the microwave. Boom, dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever you want is served. You can choose from their weekly menu that has over 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, vegan and veggie. And also here's my favorite part. You can discover over more than 60 add-ons every week. They have on the go lunch, snacks, they have wellness shots, smoothies, things that have become a part of our daily routine. There's no fuss, no mess meals, factor meals, eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, and cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. And it's tailored to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Factor is basically your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. We're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for our lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash goodisgold50 and use code goodisgold50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code goodisgold50 at factormeals.com slash goodisgold50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, it's Coachella weekend. And you know, one of the most important things to do on festival weekends and in life in general is to stay hydrated. But especially when I'm going to the desert, when I'm traveling, when I'm flying, I just got back from New York, as we all know, I have to keep hydrated with liquid IV. This is something that I always have on me in every purse, in every pocket, in every car, in every house. Liquid IV literally hydrates you with three times the electrolytes of any leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients all in one single stick. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you much faster than water alone. And they have so many new flavors. I think my current fave is the strawberry lemonade, but I also am obsessed with the white peach. It is the best on the go stay hydrated thing that I keep on me. They are made with an optimized ratio of electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients. So also know there are no artificial sweeteners in zero sugar available in bulk nationwide at Costco. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEY at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEY at liquidiv.com. Okay, so I know, obviously you're not watching, but I need to ask Gibson's opinion, at least. Now that the new season of Summer House is airing, Team Carl, Team Lindsay, are you Team Switzerland? You don't have say, to say I, which, but are you leaning more towards one team? I'll just say that I, I'm fairly close to Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Just she's somebody who I've known for at this point eight years mm -hmm. and she, we just have always been connected. And so I'm probably more on her side of things. So now with seeing more of Carl's side, mm -hmm. are you like, oh, okay, when Lindsay explained this, I'm now understanding more of Carl's perspective, just watching it or yeah, is it now? Yeah, it definitely now... colors in the lines for yeah. sure. I mean, there's, there's, there's value in getting every side of every totally. story. I really think that. And like, and I think that you can acknowledge when somebody does like 
something wrong or takes a misstep or, or I don't know, and still be a loyal friend to them or mm -hmm. still be whatever. I think that sometimes one of my frustrations about just like being around these shows is like people think in such black and white terms. Mm. And can we just I, live I, in I the gray for that, a like, bit? Live in the gray, like, <laughs> like two things can be two things can be true. Absolutely. And, and they there can be valid points on either side of their story. And that's I'm learning that. Yeah. You know? And that's <laughs> how I, I guess I'm viewing this right now. But it's, yeah. it's it's that part's not easy to watch. But I'm glad that unlike the Lindsay and Danielle thing last season that really tore mm -hmm. the house apart and was like so not fun to watch and really dark. At least with the Lindsay and Carl thing, it feels like it's mostly happening between them and there's still a lot of fun to be had on this season of Summer House. And yeah. so there's a good balance, I think, of positive and not totally. so positive. Vibes. True journalist. <laughs> Thoughts on the new cast? What are we what are we thinking about West? And do you know West personally at all? I actually don't know him. I know that he ran into Des at the comedy cellar once mm -hmm. and they like hit it off and we're laughing and that he's just like a a like pretty normal dude apparently. Yeah. <laughs> that, I like Jesse him. Jesse and West are exactly what the show needed. Yeah. The, the the show hadn't gotten like a really solid male cast member mm. in quite some time. Yeah. And you felt that in the past couple of seasons. You also want people to like want to party and have the innocence of like, let's have a good time. Cause when totally. things are so loaded and heavy, like everything you, it's like roommates where like, you're like, someone just goes like, Oh, I'm going to make this. And you're like, are you? And you're like, what are you even <laughs> referring to? And like, there's so many right. levels. Right. It's, that's why like first season is so funny. Cause you could always come in and you're like, these people are crazy. And then a couple seasons in, you're like, you would do that. You would do that. <laughs> like, it's, it's just like, there's so many right. light or someone will say something and someone will roll their eyes and you'll be like, why they do that? And you'll be like, you don't yeah. Get into it. It's just no. it's first season is beautiful. Mm. Fresh yes. West in particular is really just like such a, such a breath of fresh. And yeah. like nobody has anything bad to say about him. He just like seems like the best guy. Yeah. And I also love him and Sierra. Like they are so. Do she we gets, know? She or gets, are they she still so hanging? Do we, yeah, do we know? I'll, I'm gonna let the view. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Okay. 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 Look at me having self control huh. for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you mentioned the summer house reunion. Last year, yeah. obviously, we had the Vanderpump Rules reunion last mm -hmm. year. And I know <laughs> you mm. just wrote a piece for Betches about the rituals of reality TV reunions. Yes. So um, I'm not sure what the Little inception scholar. date was for the first reunion. But after its first one in, what, like 2007, following the first season of Real Housewives of Orange County, yeah. Bravo seems to you know, just kind of have like a golden standard for reality TV reunions. Now Andy Cohen is doing... The Kardashians right. reunion and who knows what and else traitors, is to come. Traitors, yeah. yeah. Um, Hannah and I have obviously participated mm -hmm. in reunions, but Gibson, <laughs> I think you've definitely seen more of them. them than we have. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think at this point Bravo has perfected the formula? Yeah, it's interesting because that piece that I that they had me write yeah. was about all of reality TV. Yeah. And I had to include enough examples from other non-Bravo shows. Uh -huh. And it was kind of hard to right. do that. It's like Love is Blind is doing their reunions that aren't very good because I don't think mm -hmm. Nick, and Nick and Vanessa are very good at hosting those. I think it it shows you how good Andy is at them, first yeah. of all. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's a big part of why they're so good. But like Bravo just like has an unlock. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Like there's there's nothing no, like You know when you watch one, it's like they have a random host that right. didn't even watch the show and they're asking questions and the viewers are like, you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah. Right. Like, Where even if Andy, even if you're like, I don't think you watched the season, <laughs> he, this, I'm just talking about summer. <laughs> Did you feel that? He did not watch. I don't think about <laughs> like some things you'll ask, and you're like, okay. rah, rah, rah. but I, but he's busy. He is. I don't know busy. how he watches as much. I as do he have watches. to say, I don't look. He he probably got a cut. He right. got a nice little summary cut. Um, but that he counts. still will will be able to make it spicy. And listen, that's part not of Vanderpump and Housewives. Yeah. I'm talking about other shows. Yeah, <laughs> but that's part of the art of being a really good host is like convincing yes. mm -hmm. the talent and the viewer that like you are totally plugged into this too. Well, yeah. he, regardless if you watch it, he's plugged in and he will get to the bottom of it. Oh, absolutely. And he'll uh, yeah. I actually think that sometimes at the non Housewives, non Vanderpump Rules reunions, he like. Gives himself more agency to just kind of like go there. You know it what I mean? So he asks like the kind of more savage questions. Because I'll watch yeah. him. Like I think even during what, one of my reunions, I'll watch him change sides during the reunion because he doesn't really know us that well, I don't think. So he'll be like, oh, I thought, oh. and then, like he's literally like we're all trying to get him to like so, get our side because so we know guys, he's Are you guys multiple. sitting there like trying to read his mind about like what he's actually thinking about? Well, it? you definitely don't want him to have a like bad response to you. I do notice whoever is first chair, their eyes are always looking at the cards. Like what's <gasps> next? Okay, Jenna's. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like I was always so nervous around him, and I wanted, I just wanted Andy to like me the whole time. Like I would be like crying, mm-hmm. fighting with someone, then turn to Andy and be like, <laughs> <Help>. <laughs> I like try to make a joke around Help Andy. Me, I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally am gonna yell at, and then I go, Andy, I like, I like your shirt. <laughs> Do you have any all-time favorite reunion moments that come to mind? Oof. I mean, Ooh. I kind of think nobody does a reunion like Atlanta. Yeah. It's like the, mm-hmm. the the heyday of Nini on there. Like her mm-hmm. versus Kim, there were some really good reads that happened. Yeah. Phaedra and Kenya are so good at reunions. That cast, I think just like some, they're just like really good at what they do. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, your reunion last year was like pretty all time, honestly. And and just like the whole, I love like a monoculture spectacle, like media event. And that was absolutely that. Like we all had watch parties and things. Yeah. Like it was so fun to I watch. Mean, and it, watching, deliver, it also delivered. Watching Sheena watch the reunion. <laughs> like it would, cu- we'd be like this and it would cut to Sheena and she'd go, oh. Yeah. And then I, like, <laughs> that was, I've never felt more, the audience I think felt so connected I with you. That. That, that was iconic. <laughs> that was so good. And you'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. I think of, um, J- also James is really good at reunions, I think. Oh yeah. And he, when he, what was it? When he like crawled on the floor because he was like, yes. Stassi, you're crawling Keep back crawling to the show. Back. That was an all time early <laughs> moment, I think for you guys. Though, Wait, but. I'm so embarrassed. I go on my phone and it says Stassi's returned to VPR. And I saw I that. immediately text Paige <laughs> and I go, oh my God. And then like, look at the comments. It's April Fool's. I yeah. fully got tricked. <laughs> and Sounds I, like one of those LinkedIn bio things that people are doing. <laughs> Literally. And I, I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go VPR. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, we would welcome her back with open arms. Mm-hmm. I think she's just at a point in her life where she wouldn't yeah. come back, but... Mm-hmm. If she did, it's like the kids are friends. You know, we'd be like riding a bike for her. Uh I come right in. I would absolutely embrace her presence. She turned down the valley apparently. So Mm -hmm. like, she doesn't fit in with that group though. Those aren't really her friends. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to live in the valley because Jesse and Michelle don't. But but you have to fit the vibe of the show. Yeah. I think even if it was just you know we got a couple cameos and some play dates next season. Just want to put that out there. Would love that. I would love that. I would love that. I love when yeah. Lala no. popped up on that. Yeah. Show. I think it make it, it enhances the fact that it's like an overlapping universe with what totally. Yeah. Because that's also what would really happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. What's all happening? Yeah. I know. It's, it's all, all happening. happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for getting into some shenanigans with me. This was this so was fun. So fun. I would love to do this again. I need to just start making. New York a regular thing now that I know there's the studio out here I've got my friends out here do you feel a here. different vibe when you're here when recording is it different no Ye- yeah. um, she goes like I bring the vibes <laughs> wherever yeah, I go I, she brings the vibes boys lie the I bring suits. the vibes yeah. Yeah. Um, I do I love recording out here mm-hmm. I had no idea that we had like a sister studio with Dear Media mm-hmm. and then I asked Amanda Hirsch I was like wait so where do you record? Like, do you just have the dopest home studio? <laughs> yeah. And she told me about WTF, and I was yeah. like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we're good. gonna make this more of a Yay. thing. Yes. But awesome. Please tell everyone where they can find you and when they can find your Netflix special. September, you said? Oh, yeah, in September. And yeah, HannahBurner.com. I have shows coming up still next couple months. And follow me on TikTok, yeah. Instagram, listen to Gig Squad, and Burner Phone with my husband. Yes. yes. <laughs> my podcast is called Gabbing with Gib. Yes interviews, Bravo hot takes, all all that, Tuesdays and Fridays. And then you can follow me at Gibsonoma uh, all across socials. Hell yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. See you next week. I've been Bye. searching for this all my life. You're just my type. I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right. Your dark hair because I so bright.